shot by foot, right? Niggas say you want my neck like a goofy can't get dropped with Have my agents pull up on your block with that job Sick for the nigga in the dish can see a snitch and he up in if that nigga Alright, what's up everybody? It's your boy Foot with the footage I'm here with my boy Chino Tell everybody what's up, man What's going on, man? Play 18 Play 18, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so first question I got for you today, bro mm -hmm. Is do you prefer to go by Chino or Little 18? Like, Alright, so my name, how I branded myself, is Chino the Bread. That was my Instagram name, my music name, all that like Chino. Right. But my purpose for Lil' 18 is because I want to hit fame before 18. My parents, my mom, she didn't have her parents at 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? Both of them, they, they passed. So, like, that's why I call myself Lil' 18 because I want the fame. I want my mom to be living good while I'm 18. Mm -hmm. So I created that Lil' 18. But... I go by Chino. I go by Chino because like that's my branded name. So if I change it, I won't have as much fans. I won't have as much, you know, like notice with without that name. That's my branded name with that. For sure. Yeah. Like how long you how long you had that like that, that name like Chino? Yeah. I had Chino for a grip since like seventh grade. It's like seventh grade, eighth grade. I had that. Yeah, it was like seventh grade, sixth grade. They just called me my name, Javon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's up, bro. Grade. That's what's up. So like where you grew up at like originally? I mean. Kind of back and forth type shit, but like I'm from New York, Brooklyn, but I moved out here when I was in like third, fourth grade, mm -hmm. and then I moved back to New York. So, you know, I was telling you like how my mom was trying to get shit settled, so she kept going back and forth, get the bread right, go back and forth, get the money right, go up there, get the bread right, come back down here, shit cheaper. Yeah, so I was moving back and forth. So, really, really, if you want me to keep it a buck with you, I would probably say like 60 40 type shit, like down here 60% mm -hmm. because we kept coming back down here when I was a kid but then I go back to New York in yeah. the summers and go back to school up there you know what I'm saying so probably like 60% down here 40% up there for sure for sure yeah. like so like growing up like I know like everybody running the hard times bro so like oh shit it's straight yeah yeah like hard times so what kind of hard times did you face coming up did you face any like did yeah you? I got a song called Cold Nights so basically, that song was about, all my songs was legit. I got a song called Small World too. Everybody know that shit hit 18,000 plays. Everybody know that song. But um, really, like, how I was telling you, like, first, like, we were sleeping in the car. We didn't have our money right. We were sleeping in the car. And she get real crazy. We were sleeping in the car. We had no AC, no heat, none of that. And we would, like, we will go behind a building mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. We will go behind a building in Brooklyn. And um, we had, like, $5, 10 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? My mom, it's, my mom has... Six kids, six uh, step kids, so it's 12 of us. And we was not living right. We was in a, a van, we was in a van. And we all like, had like little jackets, had nothing, none of that shit. And it's cold in New York, you know that it's cold. So um, basically like in the morning times, we would go back out, like probably like seven, eight in the morning, go to the Walmarts. And it's like a big shopping center, basically like Rivergate, whatever, right here. It's a big shopping center. And it's like Lowe's, Walmart, Target. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of uh, liquidators, all these stores, right? And my mom, we were going to Walmart or whatever, and BJ's, that's where we go. We go to BJ's, mm -hmm. get the variety candy, Yeah. go out there, and then my mom, I sit with my mom, a friend of the Walmart. My brother would go to Target, my other brother would go to the Lowe's, my other brother would go to Home Depot, and then my dad would go to Super Target. I mean, uh, yeah, Super Target, whatever. So basically, like, we all split up, and we just started bringing a hella bread, hella bread. And then, um, basically, like, one time, we came back to the, uh, go back to the car, it was around nighttime, the car wasn't even there. So we had to, like, sleep. Not really outside type shit, but like we had to go to my cousin crib, but they didn't really have space like that, space like that. So they let us sleep in their car outside. It was real tight, jam packed. But then some of us, it's a lot of us, bro. So then some of us like went upstairs in the crib, you know, sleep. But in New York, it's real small and shit. Like the cribs are real small. Right. So niggas stole our whip, or whatever. Then we had to get right. So that bread from went from a minivan to a Benz if you see that shit outside. So now um, we living better, obviously. But yeah, niggas stole the whip, so we was down bad for real. Yeah, so like that 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 had to motivate you to to yeah. start rapping though, right? Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, my brother though, he my brother raps. Every, people know him, my brother rap. He nice as fuck. Professional audio engineer and all that. Yeah, that's that's what's up, bro. So like, what age did like both of y'all start? Like your brother started rapping. Like you started rapping. My brother started rapping like <clears throat> like five, basically probably like five. Five years old, he been rapping like creating his own songs, like you know ABC rhymes, obviously, but like. Cat and hat and you whack type shit like that, but mm -hmm. I started rapping realistically probably like because I always was influenced by it. You know, you be around it. He 
always rapping, you know, lit rap battles anywhere he go. I see his videos on YouTube, him at Olympic High School that I go to right now, <clears throat> beatboxing, freestyling, everybody around him. I'm like, yo, that shit's lit, bro. So I was like, um, I started rapping. I was like, bro, I started looking at his books and shit. I was like, yo, this nigga L with it. He mad nasty. Everybody out here, like, yo, freestyle right quick. So I was like, all right, that, say that. So um, I started rapping or whatever. I started rapping probably when I was like, probably in like sixth grade, no cap, probably like sixth grade. I started like trying to do my little shit in middle school. Everybody trying to stand around me. I'm like, come on, show me what you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah. like sixth grade, I started rapping or whatever. I'm sure it's fine though. Uh, so like, you st when did you notice like you was taking it seriously, or when did you start taking it seriously? Seriously, ninth, ninth grade I started taking it seriously, cause I got a little attention from it, and I liked that shit. I was like, yo, girls fucking with it, niggas fucking with it. I go to the football games, everybody screaming, Chino, Chino baby, but that's my Chino. tag. I'm like, Chino baby, yeah, and show you fucking with it. So I was like. I would say that. So I go out to the basketball games or whatever. I be fly shit. I be fly as a motherfucker. Like, I, I don't, man, I, I wake up fly. You know what I'm saying? I can't <laughs> go out looking like a bum. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So, like, I go to the basketball games or whatever. I go a little late. You know, little tactics to have everybody looking at that shit. <laughs> so I go to the game a little late or whatever. Got my shit, my jewelry flashing. The, game, the attention get off the game for a minute. And motherfuckers be like, Damn, you know, you know what I mean? And I just, I love you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's good, you know, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you don't be mad people, no cap, like, no, no, like, no cocky shit. There be mad people, like, you know, scream my name, whatever, pointing at me. I go to football games, motherfucker, they got my arms. You know, give me a dad, everybody hands coming out and shit. I'm like, yo, that's my fucking love. That's love. Yeah. So, I got them, I started getting right ninth grade year, whatever, because I, I felt the attention from Small World. Everybody knew that show, this shit was buzzing around the city. It started buzzing. So probably like definitely definitely nine grade years when I started taking that shit serious. Yeah, so you can you can really see the progression though, like. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Like, realistically, like me me and Sable, that was me and Sable, me and Sable, uh, me Sable and my nigga Dome, me and him not tight like that no more. But um, we all we used to have this group called PGE or whatever. Mm -hmm. Niggas just cut our ass like it was called Prilly Gang Entertainment type shit. <laughs> Niggas was like what Pre PGE or whatever. So me and him was in this little group, and me and Sebo. My first song was with uh, with Sebo. My first song was with Sebo. Yeah. Like I had songs obviously recorded because my brother the engineer when I was younger type shit. Mm -hmm. But like I couldn't find them. They was fire though. They was fire. I couldn't find them. clean quality or like best kid you probably heard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was a baby. So. Sure. But um, what's the name? Sebo. Sebo made. I made my first song. Sebo was called Run It Up, and that shit had like seven, eight thousand plays in like two months. Dang. And that's my first song. I was sick when I recorded that shit. Was so, that was so fire, bro. <laughs> and then um, after that, I just started like, yo, bro, this shit is going up. Like, we need to take this shit serious. Then we started coming out with hits. Uh, Run It Up. And then uh, No Hook, we made a No Hook, too. We just got hella shit unreleased. Um, we got Ami Amor. Females love that shit. It's a, it's a love song, Ami Amor. Yeah. And he got a vocal. That motherfucker go crazy. But uh, yeah, so um, first song was with him. And then after that, I just started seeing progression. We started working. How much? How much start working? So like, who who inspired you to write like do like write music or you know really get enemies? Like, who inspired you? Like your art, your favorite artist? You know what I'm saying? Artist wise? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> like, I was really inspired by my brother. Honestly, really, really inspired by my brother. Like, if it wasn't him for him, I don't know, cause I was a basketball player. Like, I was strictly into basketball. Like. I had like an offer to no cap. I had like an offer to whatever. I played D1 AAU, but um, really my brother, but artist in the industry, A Boogie. I like A Boogie. A hard. Boogie. Yeah, that's my man. I fuck with A Boogie. Yeah, yeah, A Boogie hard, bro. A Boogie hard. All right, so like being around Charlotte, like what you think of the music scene around here as far as like where it's possibly going, like you know where you sit at, and you know what I'm saying, different people, like just the scenery all all around. Well, honestly, I, um, well, yeah, honestly, like, I see, like, um, probably, like, Draco and Allen, like, they own some good music, so they own, the, they own the good stuff, but, like, it's, like Draco said, it's not a, a sound for Charlotte yet, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's not a big sound for Charlotte yet, so it's, like, it's, we don't have our own sound, like he was saying, so, honestly, I don't really... No disrespect to Charlotte, man, but I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't really, you know, see, like, potential for, like, that. not to talk down on the city or whatever. But, like, like he said, Russell Cold and Russell Cold and uh, the baby, mm -hmm. they sound totally different. But if you go to New York, it's a common sound. Mm -hmm. Not only just because the accent, but it's a common sound. Right. Like, 
Louisiana rappers. Uh, what's the name? Lil Boosie. Lil Boosie. Name another one. Uh, Maybe. NBA Young Boy. Yeah, Young Boy. They have a common slang sound. Down here is like there's not a sound. You don't. There's really no accent. Like there's no slang. Mm -hmm. A lot of that slang is derived from other places around. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Virginia, Georgia, New York. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of like derived like slang. So um. Honestly, I don't know where it's gonna go, but I know probably a few people is gonna go. Probably a few people gonna get out. Yeah. So, really, everything is a progression out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everything in progression, cause the music scene really just started buzzing out yeah, here. You know what I'm saying? So, but like, is there anybody out here in particular like you would like want to work with? Mm. Any artists? Like, uh, I probably I'm working on some shit right now with my nigga Fuego Jack. Mm -hmm. He type nice, he type nice. Um, I work with, let me see. Mm, I obviously work with my nigga Adam. We, we be talking, and Draco too. We got some shit in the works. I be talking to them to hit me up, whatever. They wanna um get right on the feature, cause I was on live, whatever, bro. It was like, I was I was talking, I was like, yo, realist, realistically, I was like, I need to get more features, like, because your fans is your fans. Right. My fans is my fans. But if we collab, cross if, over. it'll cross over. Even if the music is neutral, and it's not all that good, like let's say it's like it's all right, you know what I'm saying? If it's all right, just because they fuck with him, they're gonna be like, let me check him out mm -hmm. because it's his fans, and my fans gonna do the same shit for him. My fans will be like, oh shit, I love Chino. Who is this do with Chino though? Yeah. Let me go fuck with him. Let me go see. You definitely gain followers. You definitely gain clout from that. Like let's put each other on basically. Your fans, my fans, my fans is your fans. Mm -hmm. So I definitely work with Alan. I definitely work with Draco, and obviously my name Sabo. And uh, you know Milan Hotel? Nah, nah, nah. He a rapper too. He's he's some slight. He got a little clout. I fuck with I fuck with bro. Word. That's what's up, bro. So, you know what what kind of up and kind of up and coming projects you got going on? You know what I'm saying? You got any album mixtapes coming out? Songs? Yeah, I um, I got hella shit, bro. Yeah. I got so much music. It's ridiculous. I I probably got over like forty five songs on private. Like, and I know that shit probably don't sound like a lot, but like, bro. That's a that's the that's the these I'm not in the industry. These motherfuckers be having thousands of songs that's an industry that's on private. But like I have like forty five songs on private, so I'm good. I can sit back and relax and just mm, maybe next week I should post a song. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm good. I don't gotta worry like, oh, I need to post a song or I need to go to the studio and record. I'm good, I'm set. Yeah. My brother's an audio engineer, I'm set. So I can make music all day, every day. So I got about like forty five songs on private. I got an E P on private. Um, it's some small. I don't really like to drop albums like that yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like my target audience isn't big enough for that yet. Right. I feel like it will, especially if I got a hit on that album. I feel like it will take attention away from it. Mm -hmm. So my tactics like don't drop long songs and don't drop big, big uh, variety of music right. because you drop mm -hmm. an album. I feel like if it's two different sounds in that album, like let's say you got a song that you're singing in, and you got a song that you're rapping in. If you're not famous, people. People don't, you know, people not really there yet. They yeah. don't have an ear for music. So if you don't, if you're not saying what they want to hear or your style, they don't want to hear. It. So I got an EP, like 45 songs private. I got some dope shit coming real soon, though. Real dope, real dope. So like, how often you go to the studio? How or? often? Realistically, probably like, probably like two times a week, three times a week. Yeah, that's good, bro. Some people don't even go like that. Some people wait months. And nah, yeah, I be in there, bro. My brother be getting me right, I swear, bro. I'm going to show you some shit. I'm going to show you some shit. Yeah, so, like, do you, like, write your stuff or you freestyle? What do you, what do you prefer? Mm -mm. I hate I hate freestyle. I cannot go on the booth and freestyle. I'm nasty with the freestyle, like I told you. Like, I can freestyle and go anything, go yeah. anything. But I hate freestyle rapping. Like, like I'm not going to go and freestyle so rap a song. This is a song. It's supposed to be well thought and put together. Mm -hmm. Not no, oh, you know what? I just want to make a song. Let's go on the booth for a course of bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. I want people, that's that's the whole mumble rap generation. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, oh, I can just put some shit together. It'll sound good. No, no, no. All my lyrics have a meaning behind it. All my lyrics is well thought. I make punchlines. I sit. It takes me It takes me a long time to make music. Yeah. I write for days. My mans be getting mad. Like, come on, hurry up. Like, they be getting tight. Like, I like, bro, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit. I wanna be able to write. I wanna say what makes hits. Say what makes hits. He be on, like, if, let's say those are Charlotte Billboard, say what would be on the Billboard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he could sit down and make a song. I call him, he making a song. He's recording a song the same day. Like, he sit down and make a song and record it the same day. 
me, it'll take me about a good three days, two, three days to make a full song and get it. That's why I'm always writing. I'm always writing. So I can be ready to go to the studio two to three times a week. Right. So I can push that shit out. I write all day, bro. All day. I just be writing. That, is, right. that ties into you having like 45 songs because you know some you said some people have like a thousand songs mm -hmm. you know some people go in there and just you know just push stuff out and yeah. really don't put nothing into it you know what That's i'm saying fine. but you do it differently so but do you like plan on like have you done any performances out here like i mean i have done one performance me and my man i had done one performance but like it was nothing really big it was um it was in this little spot uptown Mm -hmm. It was on the spot uptown. I, I went through, um, what's that called? Um, I think it's Afton. Afton booking. Mm -hmm. they, they book artists who select your genre or whatever. But it was nothing really big. You know what I'm saying? It was just a little a little step up stage. It was a little crowd. But it was nothing really big. But I'm looking to get more. That's what I was telling you about. Marlon Hotchower. Right. He, he be booking shows. So I'm trying to fuck with bro. I'm trying to get some shows. So do you prefer to stay independent or would you rather like or if somebody brought something to the table what would you like what would you do i'm too small for that bro i'm not i'm not falling for none of them traps and tricks them setups and contracts none of that bro i'd rather stay independent start my own label like rich decay bro mm -hmm. rich decay rich decay probably got bread bro ceo like what <laughs> a boogie hybrid's a label like what he got his whole team behind him sure. everybody is set up to do certain things so his man's handle all the paperwork, all the money, all the paperwork. Then he got Ness, Ness Average Label, producer. Handle all that. Engineer, beats, quality, all that. He handled all that for him. Then he got Don Q, side rapper, basically like me and Sable type shit. Mm -hmm. They're in a group. Me and Sable not in a group, but we like bros. So yeah. they always make music together. Me and Sable are hella songs are private. Always make music together. But they start their own label. I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably sign to a label. It depends. It depends how good it is. I have to really read the contract, but it depends. Mm -hmm. That's what's up, bro. That's, that's, that's what's up. Yeah. I respect that. Oh, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Tell everybody, man, where they can find your music at. Tell everybody, you know what I'm saying? Where they, they can find you on social media, YouTube, SoundCloud, all that. Really? Y'all can find me anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, Amazon, eBay, anywhere, like, anywhere, 99 cent, if you don't got Apple Music streams, if you got Apple Music, it's free, go click that download, my name is Chino with the bread, C-H-I-N-O-W-I-T-D-A-B-R-E-D, or you can look me up on SoundCloud, Lil18, L-U-L-1-8. Man, y'all go get that, man, my boy Chino here, Chino with the bread, Lil18, it's your boy Foot, I'm back with the footage, and we about to take off. Chino, Chino baby. Hey, hey, you peons fucking with my team, you fuck with me, yeah. I'm chasing checks, I chase their bread, I'm counting green, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, you peons fucking with my team, you fuck with me. I've been running up, but I'm chasing this paper, can't fuck with your peons, your peons are haters. Y'all saying I'm fake cause I never hit lines, fuckin' my phone cause you never hit mine. You taking up space and you swear that it's vacant, I'm gonna hit fame, I just gotta be patient. Got right on my dick cause I see that I'm poppin', got brains with the breast so you know how I'm rockin'.